Bread with Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Bishop Clark is the spiritual leader of the Body of Christ Assembly Church of Cleveland, Ohio. He is an author, songwriter, and recording artist. Bishop Clark inspires us to maximize our potential through biblical teachings, revelatory insight, and healthy commentary for believers and people from all walks of life. Join our community by texting MAXIMIZE to 55444. You can join Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark streaming live on YouTube every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. The Daily Bread Show, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And Wednesday Midweek Bible Study at 7 o'clock p.m. We invite you to join our global one-hour prayer line, Monday through Friday, by calling... 712-775-8968 at 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The access code is 304-282. Call your family and friends and get ready to be inspired. This is Your Daily Bread with Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 1, amen, through 7. It says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberty. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, uh, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering of the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything else, you abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. This grace also. Uh, our subject matter, uh, Paul's teaching on giving, and if I was to use a subtopic, it would be this grace also. This grace also. Amen. God's going to give you grace. Thank God. We usually talk about grace as it lost, relates to our faults, our flaws, our challenges, and his grace is sufficient. But the Apostle Paul said, I want y'all to abound in this grace also. And that is in the grace of giving, in the grace of honoring the Lord. Again, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Bless the word is my prayer. Let all God's anointed say amen. I've enjoyed and been enjoying this very, very powerful teaching on Apostle Paul. I mean, his conversion, he sent out his five missionary journeys, uh, his unique challenges with those that were Gentiles, and then the very specific and intense challenge with those who were Jews. Man, Paul had a ministry of suffering. Uh, according to the word of God, show him what great things he's going to suffer for the kingdom of God. When you study his life and ministry, Paul was different from all the other apostles. I brought out the other day that when Paul got to, back to Jerusalem, they were about to arrest him and beat him dead, beat him until he died. They didn't have that same attitude about the other ministers because Paul was radically preaching liberation, amen, from the Jewish traditions and from uh, the law. And they were vehemently, they were intense, they were passionate about it. Paul, in his writings, magnifies that he preached the gospel. That, that's what Paul preached. So what did Paul, Paul preach? He preached the gospel everywhere. Matter of fact, he made statements like, uh, when I came among you, I, I didn't act like I knew anything except the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, I count everything else dung. It's not even worth talking about anything else but the gospel. He said, I'll glory in nothing but the gospel. And if you read it, many times in Paul's preaching, 
he gave his personal testimony, how he used to wreak havoc against the church. And then a bright light knocked him down to the ground and he was converted and called by Christ himself to preach this everlasting gospel. I mean, he tells that story. We can read it in the book of uh, Acts three on, different, on three different occasions. And this would lead me to believe that everywhere he went, he told his testimony. That was part of his preaching. And he preached from the Old Testament. He was a master. He was a scholar in the scriptures. And he was able to preach Christ from an Old Testament, Old Testament um, um, persuasion, perspective. He understood the Old Testament. He understood the laws. He understood the Jewish traditions and was able to point to the prophetic word that is woven through many of the teachings of Moses and the prophecies of the Old Testament. Certainly the prophets spoke of the Messiah. Paul was gifted and skilled to show his community and even those that were without that Jesus Christ truly was the Christ. He said things like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. He said things like, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He talked through the entire book of Romans, talking about uh, Jesus Christ has come to be our sacrifice. The wages of sin is death, but the one that uh, knew no sin became sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is Corinthians, but I mean, this man went on and on and on about preaching Christ. He preached the cross of Christ. He preached the blood of Christ. He preached forgiveness in Christ. He preached the power in the name of Jesus. I mean, Paul was a preacher of Jesus. In Paul's ministry, all roads led to Jesus. But if you study his ministry, he taught about various subjects, a lot of things. Paul taught about prayer, extensive teaching about prayer. Amen. He talked about the priesthood of the believer the ministry of the believer, that he's committed to us, the ministry of reconciliation. Paul talked about rearing your children. He talked about dealing with issues of being single, being divorced or unmarried. Paul talked about spiritual warfare, the helmet of salvation, the armor of God, wrestling not against flesh and blood. I mean, there's a long list of the things that Paul preached and he taught. But also on that list is giving. And when I tell you I was reading through some stuff today, boy, Paul was not light on this subject. He wasn't light on prayer. He wasn't light on love. He wasn't light on order in the church or the gifts of the spirit or spiritual warfare. I mean, when he opened it up, he opened it up. And it would seem like every epistle that he wrote had something to say about giving. He talked about money. He talked about giving. He talked about uh, supplying the needs uh, to those who are um, needy. He, he talked about uh, giving to the poor. He talked about supporting the work of ministry. He talked about giving to those who are leaders in the body. He talked about the right to be compensated for ministry. He talked about uh, it's important to honor, to give the honor where the honor is due. He talked about being worthy of double honor, those that labor. I mean, this man went on and on. And tonight, I want to take a few, amen, verses and go through a couple of verses and show you what Paul had to say concerning giving. Giving is a part of it. Now, this is something I want you to write down and something I want you to uh, 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 put in your, put, put in your, 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 uh, type it in. I am a stream, not a reservoir. You are designed to have the grace of God flow through you. You're not designed to take all that God has given you and bottle it up and keep it for yourself. That is the blessing. That is the finances. That is the healing. That is the miracle power. That is the faith. That is the love. That is the forgiveness. Everything that God has given you, he wants you to give it to somebody else. Don't hoard it up. Don't bottle it up. Don't pack it up. Don't build bigger barns. Let it flow through you. Because the more you let flow through you, the more comes at you. And you know that God can use you. He can send things to you because he knows how to get it through you. So type it in. I'm a river. I'm a river. I'm a stream. Type it in. I'm a stream. That's the verbiage I'm looking for. 
not a reservoir. I am a stream. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. I got the blessing of God flowing through me. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Spring up, O oh well, within my soul. Amen. God wants to bless you, but he wants that blessing to flow through you. You want to see through the word of God tonight that God is not designed men. You know, there are those people who are spiritual. They're not religious. Sometimes this could be dangerous. Other times people are right on point. Uh, they just don't use the right vernacular, the right, the right terminology. What do you mean? They know that the universe gives back to them as they give. So they sort of put it in cosmic terms. They say things like, you got to give. You got to give the charity. You can't keep it all. You got to do this. Why? Because the universe favors those who give back. You can't go through life just being a hoarder. Not in relationships, not in receiving blessings. You have to give back. Those people that have become rich and famous, a lot of times they are known for giving back. A lot of times after those people who are wealthy, after they pass away, it's discovered this person gave thousands to this charity and thousands to that. And they gave, they paid for so many people's college and so on and so forth. Why? Because they understand the law of reciprocity. That when you give, you receive. So how do they keep on getting, man, they just keep on getting more and more and more because they give. And that's the thing that people don't know. People see somebody driving a Rolls Royce and they say, I want that. But they don't ask how to get it. And part of it is reciprocity. Part of it is giving, and giving causes things to come to you. The Bible says, doubtless the sower will come again rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves with him. That you, 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 you don't just sow, you become a sower. <laughs> you become one that habitually gives. You're, you're, you're generous. You're giving. You're detached and unattached to the things of this world. The carefulness, what is it, the, the, the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world choke the word out. So you, you get stuff, but you never let it get you. you. You're willing to give and to let it go, to let it go. You, you don't have to get every dime that you're owed. You don't have to get everything that somebody, you know, has. No, no, be giving, be kind, be generous. Why? Because you are a stream, not a reservoir. All right, let's take a look at it. Our first passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, as we began, verse 1 through 7, Paul is exhorting uh, the Corinthian church to acknowledge the grace that was on the people in Macedonia. Paul is saying that when he went to Macedonia, he encountered extreme poverty and yet extreme sacrifice. He said the people didn't have much, but they gave. I mean, they had a grace to give. The people in Macedonia had a grace to give. God, give me a grace to give. You know, some people need a grace to forgive. Some people need a grace to preach or to teach or to pray. Some people need a grace to sing. They need a grace. Well, also add to that list, I need a grace to give. You pray that grace on you because God will give you that grace to give even out of extreme poverty, even out of lack. When you don't have, you can give. We know that's true, True, 1 Kings 17. The woman is gathering her last meal, and out of her last, she gives. Out of her little, she gives. Sometimes out of just about nothing, people give. Be giving. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 7, Paul writes, 1 Corinthians, Who goeth a wayfaring at any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of uh, the flock? Say I these things as a man, or say not the law the same also. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Do if God take care for oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that soweth, shall plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope shall be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, Paul said, 
It is a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things. If others be partakers of this power over you, are we not rather? We, sh we should be receiving gifts rather than anybody else, Paul says. Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers of with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Look at what Paul says here to the Corinthian church. The people that preach the gospel, now he's dealing with a specific situation because we just showed you in our first passage in 2 Corinthians in the second letter to the Corinthian church, Paul is again exhorting them in the second time. But let's take a look at the first exhortation. He lays down a foundation. The reason that Paul comes back in 2 Corinthians almost, he's not scolding, but he's, he's got a different tone because it's like y'all not getting it. 1 Corinthians, he lays a foundation. He said, all right, now I've been preaching and teaching, but you all, you haven't sent gifts. You haven't sent your support. And, I, and I've discovered that you send offerings other places to other preachers. And he said, how could you support anybody else? You got, you got 10,000 instructors, but I'm your father. I'm your daddy. If anybody you should be supporting, it should be me. This is what Paul is saying. And he says, the, the, the Old Testament says, don't muzzle the mouth of the ox that treads out the corn. That was work that the oxen would do. And some people would put a muzzle on the ox. He would be literally treading out um, what he wanted to eat. He would be doing the work. And they said, no, don't, don't, don't stop the ox from eating. I know he's working, but let him eat. Jesus says, or actually the Apostle Paul says, that the Lord didn't write this for the ox. He wrote it for us. If we're laboring in the gospel, then we should live of the gospel. So he lays that down. Amen. It's ordained, verse 14 says, they which preach should live of the gospel. Now, in 2 Corinthians, amen, chapter 8, where we began reading on tonight, he says, look at the Macedonian church. Look at these people. They sent us support out of their lack. And, and I like the way it says, I hate to keep jumping around here, but he says, verse number 7 as you abound in everything else, in faith, in preaching, that is utterance, and in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in love, you need to also have this grace that the Macedonian church has. So Paul is saying, now if you keep reading 1 Corinthians, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible study. By the time he gets up to chapter 12, he said, y'all all, all hyped up about all these gifts of the Spirit. Everybody want to speak in tongues. You everybody want to speak in tongues. He said, you know, y'all need to get some order. Y'all need to have interpretation. It's better to speak five words in English than, that people understand than to speak 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. It's not, it's, it doesn't edify. He says, you know, you... There's all kind of gifts, you know, prophecy and administration, the gift of helps. Amen. Different gifts, gifts of miracles, teaching gifts. But then in chapter 13, he says, what does it mean to have all these gifts, but you don't treat people right or you don't have love? He makes this emphatic statement that the gifts work by love. And here he says that uh, basically you excel in love but you also got to excel in this grace also. That the gifts work by love, and if you love, then you will show your love and your appreciation through giving. Oh man, Paul was a master, and he's putting it down. Look at what Paul writes to the Corinthian church in chapter 9, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 16. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Or every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly, not of necessity. God loves the cheerful giver. And God is able to make, here's that verse, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye 
always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. You're going to have everything you need when you give and support the work of the Lord. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both ministereth bread uh, for pour your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this manifestation, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution, distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer unto you or their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be unto God for this unspeakable gift. So here, the Corinthian church finally responds in their giving. Paul exhorts them. He says, you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly, you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. You're finally given a wonderful gift, and God is going to multiply it back to you in the same way that you have given. Even as Jesus taught in Matthew 7, with what measure you meet is measured to you again. Now, that's relative to judgment, but it's also relative to giving. Paul writes and speaks of it again, Galatians chapter 6. To the Galatian church, a lot of times we quote verse number 7, but look at verse uh, 7 in context. It starts with verse 6, and it reads, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So here to the Galatians, Paul writes, chapter 6, if the man of God, woman of God is preaching, if they're teaching, you communicate, give an offering, sow and support them. He says, because God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. And if you sow spiritual things, you reap spiritual things. If you sow natural things, you reap natural things things. He says, don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, you'll reap. You keep on giving. In due season, you'll reap if you faint not. He says, when you have opportunity, give. Give to all men that serve you. That's what I do. I, 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 I give. I, I, you know, you go to a restaurant. I do it quite often. Uh, Reed don't like to cook that much, so I figure it out. And I go get me a sandwich somewhere, and I tip. I like good service, and I tip. People are nice and kind. They try to give you a little conversation, especially if I'm there alone. I tip. I, I, I do, what is it called? Render due benevolence. I honor them. And you should to all men. But then it says, but especially to those who are of the household of faith. Make sure that you honor them in a very special way. Let's take a look at Philippians. And then I'll make four points and I'll be done on tonight. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 10. Paul again is talking about people that hadn't given, they hadn't support. And you know what? It's interesting because I guess it was no different in the Bible days than it is today. We celebrate those who give and support us. But many times we find ourselves teaching and exhorting towards those who have not given, towards those who hear the word but they don't support in their giving, in their finances, towards those who are lax, they hit and miss, they're not consistent, they're not faithful, they have not presented the tithe faithfully unto the Lord. They don't step out in faith and stretch in their giving. Paul was dealing with the same thing. And Paul was traveling, Paul had an entourage with him, he was caring for them. Paul said when he didn't have money, he made tents, he worked with his hands. I even read today how Paul said 
Not only did he take care of himself, but he took care of everybody that was traveling with him. He did what he had to do to support his ministry team. I have that same testimony. I said I have that same testimony. And he exhorts the church at Corinth three times. He exhorts the church at, amen, Ephesus. He exhorts the church at uh, Galatia. And now let's take a look at what he says to the Philippian church. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care for me have flourished again. Thank you for sending the offering. It finally arrived, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Now, or not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye had, or that ye did communicate to my affliction. Now, ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church commuted communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Y'all was the only ones that gave. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desired a gift, but I desired fruit that may abound in your account. But I have all and abound. I am full. I got what I need. Having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus. A lot of times we say God shall supply all my need. Well, the verse says God shall supply all your need. This was Paul speaking a blessing on the people that had sent an offering to him. My God shall supply all of your need. Hey, you're going to supply my need. You're going to supply the need of the ministry. You're going to supply the need, amen, for the kingdom and for the work of God to advance. And my God is going to supply your need. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody type it in. I'm a stream, not a reservoir. You might have to look up reservoir like I did if you want to mess that up, right? <laughs> I'm a stream, not a reservoir. Amen. God's not called you to hoard it all up. God has sent it to you. And I prophesy large sums of money are coming to the people of God. Who can receive it? Large sums of money are coming to the streams. God is sending large sums to the streams. If you're a stream, large sums of money are about to come to you. I said if you are a stream, large sums of money are about to come to you. But if you're a reservoir, if you like to hoard it up and hold on to it, and you're so afraid you hold on to every little dime, here it is, God has given you a miracle. I talked to one of the, the uh, spiritual daughters on last night who said they thought there was some cancer, amen, there, and she went and checked it out and prayed, believed God, and God gave her a clean bill of health to God be the glory. To God, listen, God is sending out miracle after miracle after miracle. And I even got some of my daughters, Karen, who are struggling and believing God to bring them through their sickness and their challenge. And we are standing in faith with you. But the blessing of the Lord has made us rich and add no sorrow with it. God has kept a roof over our head. God has kept clothes on our back and shoes on our feet, food in our belly. God has kept us in our right mind. We have to be a conduit of blessing. We have to be a stream for God to send his blessing through us. I'm not a reservoir. I'm not a reservoir. Oh my God, I want to shout it out. I am not a reservoir. I don't hoard it up. I don't keep it all to myself, but I let it flow through me. I give it and direct it where the Lord wants me to send it. I take care of his man. I take care of his work. I give as God has prospered me. There are a lot of verses here uh, that Paul writes in just about every epistle. He talks about giving. And the, Timothy talks about giving and sowing and what money is and the love of it is the root of all evil and, and even has a word for those who are rich. I think I'll, I'll speak to that verse. But point number one, 
God's blessings equipped us to serve others. God's blessings equip us to serve others. The reason that God bless you is for service. Can you imagine here it is, God bless you with a new car, but won't give nobody a ride that you can, that you can serve? Won't even give them a ride to church back in those days. We, you know, trying to catch a ride. I ain't going over there to pick them up. They better give me some gas money. God has blessed you with, you got a car and gas money. Why are you acting like that? Don't be like that. Don't be like that. The closet, your closet is falling down. You know what? I thank you, Jesus. I, I, I got a challenge. I want to put a challenge out right now as I'm led by the Spirit. Hey, I have uh, done some things. I got some. I got a place in Cleveland. I got a place here in Florida. I got clothes here. I got clothes there. I got stuff. Amen to God. And you know what? I have given away so much stuff in this last, I say, four or five months, just going through my closet, shoes, and stuff like that. I put a challenge out there. I challenge who who gonna take this challenge to go through their closet and have another giveaway. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it out. I didn't gave away sweaters, shirts, suits, shoes, shorts, shirts, hats, pants, jackets, coats. I'm going to go another round. And I went three rounds. I went three rounds of giving. And I just kept on giving. I just like, man, I still got some more stuff. I still got more stuff. I, you know what? I'm about to give more. And I put the challenge out there right now. Why, why am I doing this? Because I know that the Lord has overloaded us with benefits. I know you got more junk than you could ever wear. I know you got more shoes than you go. You ain't gonna wear that junk no more. I challenge you to go through your junk. I mean, go through your stuff <laughs> and give some stuff away. Cause somebody needs what you have. Somebody would love to have what you have. And I challenge you to share. Anybody wanna take that challenge with me? I'm gonna go through my closet again. I'm going to go through all my closets. I'm going to go through my shoes again and give some stuff. Well, I got tennis shoes I ain't going to never wear. I got some other stuff I don't even gonna... Just give that stuff away. Give it to somebody that's going to use it or give it to the Salvation Army. Just give, let it go. Why? Because I am not a reservoir. I am a stream of the Lord's blessing. His blessing is making me rich and adds no sorrow. It says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28, let him that stole steal no more, verse 28, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that need. So why, why should I work? If you stole, don't steal no more. But then go to work. Why? So you can have to give. What? Yeah. Work so when somebody needs something, you got it. That's what it says. Now, of course, you want to take care of yourself, take care of your family, but he says work so you can have to give when somebody needs. Look what Paul says. What is the point that we're making? God's blessing equips us to serve others. You're blessed to have a job. You're blessed to have a stream of income. You're blessed to have, I don't care how much it is, you're blessed to have it. And it's there that God can use you whenever he wants to. He's, he's using you as a storehouse. He's just sitting over here for a while. He wants to store it, and sometimes he needs to move it over here and send it over here. And you know what? The more you allow him to allow the blessing to flow through you, the more he sends the blessing your way. Point number two, acts of giving. The act of giving is more important than the amount you give. Let me say that again. The act of giving is more important than the amount you give. Paul, like Jesus, commends people who are giving on the level they can give on. You know, the, uh, the gift is not applauded simply because it's $1,000 or $2,022. We're calling for that seed. But that's not the only thing that they applauded. The Bible says in Luke 21, verse number 1, And he looked up, speaking of Jesus Christ, and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasure. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast into the offerings God said, or offering of God. But she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had. Here are the words of Jesus Christ. And Paul seems to have that same attitude. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 
verse number seven, he says, therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love towards us, see that ye abound in this grace also. Even if you, you know, the Bible says that Paul writes, as a, let a man give as he's purposed in his heart to give. Not grudgingly, but willingly. A cheerful giver is what God is looking for. Sometimes it's not the biggest amount, but giving even the small amount that's sacrificial, the fact that you're giving. And let me teach you, y'all have heard me say this a thousand times, but I really want it to ring true to you. If what you give don't mean anything to you, it don't mean anything to God. Your giving should be significant. How much should I give? Until it's significant. When it's nothing, it's nothing. Oh man, here's five dollars. That ain't nothing. You're right. It ain't nothing. It's not anything. If it's anything, if it's not like if it's nothing for you to give fifty dollars, it's nothing. I'm standing making an offering appeal, and you know what? This is something. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all a little insight. Lord, I didn't go a little longer than I wanted to go, but let me give y'all a little insight. I had to get over what people said about me because I labor taking in taking up offer. People talk about me. People have left the church. People get offended. I had to get delivered. And I had to embrace the fact that this is what God has called me to do. To take the finances and do the work, but also to receive of the finances so the people of God can be blessed. To be a conduit. To stretch people to the next level. To get you off of broke row. I, 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 is Michelle on? Is Michelle Smiley on? I seen Michelle testifying about she just got a new house. She was one of the first people in her family that bought a house and, and ain't got And yet that's my daughter. I've been preaching and teaching her for years. And she said, I followed the principle. I got my credit together. I got my money together. And I got my house. And I said, look at what the Lord, what a miracle. But you know what? That's one of my daughters that have given thousands of dollars. Here's a here's a hundred bishop. I call for five hundred. She got the five hundred dollar offering. I call for this. She got this offering. I'm talking about thirty years. For thirty years she's been sowing. And she brings herself to a place where she she's purchased her own house. Moving in finances and moving in business and God opening doors. And many of you have the same testimonies. You got house. Some of you have even you're considering now about buying an additional property. Think about buying an income property. You think about you got business, you got this business and the other. Well, you know you come from nothing. How do you think you got raised up? God raised you up, and sometimes it's through the preached word. Sometimes it's through the faith that God has enabled me to put in you. My God, you ought to be willing to sow, willing to give, willing to give. Number three, having the right attitude about giving matters. Romans chapter 12, verse number six, it says this. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on our teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. Or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Or he that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So Paul has a line Romans 12 and 8, he says, when you give, give with simplicity. Don't give to be ostentatious. Don't give to be seen. Don't give to be gaudy. Raise, I got my money, raise it up. And I understand sometimes we celebrate and we're grateful to God. But sometimes people, people could do that to draw attention to themselves. The Bible says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. And we're in an environment now online where I can't say, I need 20 people to stand with $1,000. This is something that we need to take care of. And then everybody can get that 1000 and come and stand. Everybody can see, ooh, Sister Jojo's giving $1,000. Ooh, look at Brother Bill. He's giving the $1,000. Like, you don't get a chance to shine in this environment. What we're doing is before the Lord. How about you shine before God? Let the Lord see. Let the Lord see you sacrifice. Let the Lord see you put two or $300 aside every month. And when it's time to pay your pledge, here's your thousand. Here's your $2,022. Without a big fanfare, not to be seen. 
When you give, you give it with simplicity. Giving with the right attitude is very important. God loves 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. To every man according as he's purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor uh, or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Let me jump right into 1 Timothy chapter 6. He says this, verse 17, charge them that are rich in this world. Charge them. Charge them that are rich. Oh man, I love Paul. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Paul didn't have a problem with people that was rich. He said everything that God has given us, he's given us to enjoy. Then he says that they do good with all that money you got, do good with all that influence you got, do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, ready, I'm ready to distribute, and I'm willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Wow. Oh, Paul, you is giving it up. Charge them that are rich. Charge them. Charge them. And you know what? Rich is relative. People say, I ain't rich. You know, it's, it's relative. <laughs> my, my grandkids think I'm rich. You know why? Because I can get them an ice cream any, anytime they ask for one. Because every time they say, Granddad, can you take us to McDonald's? I can do it. They just think I'm rich. They, I don't know if, if y'all get that same experience. You got little kids around you, and uh, you know they want $5. They want a dollar. They got, and every time they ask for a little something, you got it. Okay, can you send me? Now, what is the thing? They got the green light card. They got the little cat. Can you send me $5? Can you send me $20? And every time, every time, I got the grandkids, I can do it. Anytime. It's $10, $5, $5, $2, $3, they need a dollar, they want some ice cream. They think I'm rich. And their definition of rich is the fact I can get them an ice cream or a sandwich or a cookie or whatever. Rich is relative. You know, to somebody, you're rich. That's right. To somebody, you're rich. I didn't had three clothes giveaways. And I, when I give away clothes, you're going to leave with bags, just bags of stuff. And I just got more, I got more, and I got more, and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. And let God bless me on a whole nother level, cause he can do it, he will do it, he's going to do it. I stand ready to distribute what God has given me. And our last point that we, amen, give you on tonight concerning Paul's teaching, concerning giving, is that we need to be committed to faithful giving. We need to make a commitment to allow giving to be regular. It's consistent. I like to teach my sons and daughters to be adults. Y'all know I'm not doing the Sunday school. I'm not teaching third graders. I'm not doing the adolescents. I'm talking about spiritual teaching now. I mean, somebody's got to do it, so I'm teaching y'all to do it. On the elementary level, y'all teach the entry level Christians and somebody is a babe, and y'all got to do that. Everybody, under the sound of my voice. But that's not my assignment. My assignment is to teach the leaders and in teaching the leaders, what I want to start at is faithfulness. It is required of a steward that a man be found faithful. That, that's, God is looking for faithfulness. We don't, we don't just need you to show up every now and then with your $100. I mean, I'm grateful, but how about you just be consistent? Be faithful. You know, well done thy good and faithful. What good is good without faithful? I got a good husband. He's just not faithful. I got a faithful husband. He's just not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, well done, thy good and faithful. I want to be good and faithful. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God wants you to be good and faithful. Well done, thy good and good job, and you've been faithful. You didn't just do good today, but you've been faithfully doing good. That's what God is after. Don't just tithe when you got money. You got a little extra this week. I can pay my tithe. No, be faithful. And I've taught my members... What if I'm in town, I'm out of town. Now I'm online all the time. I'm online all the time. Every day, man, I feel like I never stop preaching. Let me tell y'all the truth. I feel like I never stop preaching. I feel like uh, tomorrow morning, hey, I'm going to lay down tonight, get up again, preaching. And I got to get up a couple of hours before I preach so I can have something to preach. 
and organize and go through my scriptures and read and study and think, contemplate, pray. And then after that, okay, now we're starting to prepare for the next day, Friday. Then we got to prepare for Sunday. Then we got to prepare. Other pastors are calling. Bishop, can you send us a message? Can you preach in our conference? Can you do this? And so I'm ministering abroad. I, y'all don't know. I'm preaching in three or four cities at one time, virtually. Because I'm able to, I feel like I just never stop. And to God be the glory, I have the grace for it. But the deal is I'm faithful, I'm consistent, and I want you to be consistent. We've had members over the years that have left the church, come back, we're still here. Fall out, leave, and whatever, come back, we're still here. Still praying, still here feeding the word of God, just being consistent, being faithful. God is looking for your consistency in your support, in your giving. Be faithful. Y'all know every week we're looking for the $20 midweek sacrifice. We've asked some people to be DBS, daily bread supporters, at $25 a week, $100 a month. Hey, man, we're looking for the people who got to pay their tithe. Just pay the, if the people tithe, come on, type it in. You know what that is. If the people tithe, it cuts the drive. Yeah, we ain't got to have no fish fry, bait sale, gleaners. I'm going way back now. You ain't got to have none of that. Because the people honor the Lord with their tithe. And then every year we have a special, amen, uh, super seed offering, $500, Resurrection Sunday. We're going to have $1,000 for our anniversary celebration. We're going to do something special for the Lord, for, for the Thanksgiving or for the Christmas. And y'all know what it is. This is how we get down. This is our worship. This is our reasonable service. And we are consistent. We are consistent. We're going to be faithful to God. Why? Because his mercy is new every day. Y'all don't make me preach up in here. Don't make me preach on a Wednesday night right here in my living room. Don't do that. He is faithful. His mercy is new every day. He wakes you up with breath in your body, clothes on your body. I mean, God, his, his love is consistent. His power is consistent. His grace is consistent. Consistent. He is faithful to us. Then we can be faithful to him. Hallelujah. Let me give you these last verses. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. It says, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms. What did he give? Much alms. What did he give? Much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He got a vision. God told him what to do, but he was given. Don't you under don't you uh, forget that it's giving it gets God's attention it summons the presence of the Lord look with me at Acts chapter uh, not Acts 10 but let's move on to Galatians chapter 6 it says let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not if we faint not finally Titus chapter 2 verse 7 says in all things showing thyself a pattern of of good works, a pattern of good works in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. So he says, don't get tired doing well, Galatians, and then you show a pattern of good works. Paul says we need to be faithful. What we learn from Paul in giving is God's blessings equips us to serve others. The act of giving is more important than the amount that we give. Having the right attitude matters in our giving to God and God wants us to be faithful in our giving. Paul did not hold back in this area. And I'm telling you, uh, I, I teach a whole lot of things. Y'all know I teach prayer, I teach fasting, I teach you know, marriage, I teach relationship, men, how to be men, women, serving, preaching, teaching, leading. We teach all these things, faith, giving. Giving is the lesson tonight. Don't get mad that it's giving. Giving is a part of your worship. It's a part of your commitment to God. Because your money represents your time, your intellect, your schooling, your education, your experience. It's everything. That's your money. Don't fool with my money. That's my life. That's right. And you need to give your life to God. Where man's treasury is, there is his heart also. You can direct your heart by directing your treasure. Give that money to this woman, to this girl, to this whatever. That's where your heart is. It's in the car. It's in the, that's where your heart is. Where is your money? Where is your money? Make sure you have a significant amount in the kingdom of God. Lay your treasure up in heaven where no moth and rust can corrupt. 
thieves can't break in and steal. Honor God in your giving. Giving is a tremendous privilege. Understand that you are a stream, not a reservoir. You are a conduit of the Lord's blessing. He blesses you to bless others. Come on, clap your hands for the good word of God. Well, praise the Lord. This is Pastor Clark here, just encouraging you to reach for your super seed. There's a buzz going around bzz, stating that the super seed is coming. The date is April the 7th, it's first Sunday at the Silver Spot. We're reaching for 500 to 1,000 or exceedingly above that. Whichever way you wanna worship the Lord, bring it on the first Sunday in April at the Silver Spot. Bring your 500, bring your 1,000 or more. God bless you and we'll see you there. It's Super Seed Sunday, April 7th. If you believe in the power of prayer, Join us at 8 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday, on our prayer line, 712-775-8968. The access code is 304-282. Join Bishop Clark Monday through Fridays at 9 a.m. for our daily bread. It's refreshing, it's enlightening, and it's empowering. We'll see you there. Hello, partners, members, and friends. It's time to worship the Lord through our giving. The scripture commands us to honor the Lord with 10%, which is our tithe, and he will send his blessings. And as we honor the Lord with an offering, the Lord will allow men to give unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So let's be obedient and honor the Lord now. There are several ways to support the Body of Christ Assembly through your giving. Through our cash app, dollar sign, B-O-C-A-C-H-U-R-C-H. -C -H. You can mail in your donation to BACA at 20900 Miles Parkway, Warrensville Heights, Ohio 44128. Or you can call in your donation to 216-475-6327. Remember, every seed brings forth a harvest. Begin your gifting today. Thank you for watching Your Daily Bread with Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell to stay connected with our YouTube community.